Good morning, hospitality. How are we doing today? Good. Good morning. Live, we, live from Vegas. We are live. We're the triple, what do we call it? Three Musketeers? Yeah, triple yeah, threat. Yeah, the triple threat. Yeah. We're missing Michael Golden, our fourth, but, you know, we had him last week, so enough of his face. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Vegas, though, it's so good to see you guys in person. I know. Yeah. It, it actually, it feels like way more fun to do it in person than just logging on to like another Zoom call that's just broadcasted. 100%. And this is my first time meeting Brandy in person. I know. So. It, it feels so funny when you like are interacting with someone over the internet for years and you're like, have I met you yet? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's great to meet you in person. Yeah, likewise. All of our viewers and listeners went now because we get along so well. Yeah. You know, on, on camera and everything. But oh, what an exciting time to be now, doing more in-person events, uh, we did book direct show last week. So shout out to everybody that tuned in for that and then got to also attend. But then now at VRMA and you got to attend the. Uh, yeah, the premiere of Homeowners last, last night, Matt Landell's uh, show uh, featuring V-Trips and uh, uh, Casigo. And it was uh, great, like a um, lot of uh, colleagues a lot of um friends seeing them everyone dressed up there was there was a tortoise on the red carpet very cool that's a very <laughs> interesting celebrity guest to have yeah. yeah uh but it was and it was a lot of fun uh the drinks were flowing and uh nice little panel at the end too sort of talking about industry trends and sort of where things go from here yeah i like that it adds a little bit of flash to the conference yeah. like a movie premiere basically at the beginning i think yeah. that's fun do you think I, we can get the tortoise on the show Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Like get the, get their take. Yeah. yeah. See what the big takeaway was from their vacation. Room but I, I do think conferences should start with the gala. Like yeah. Everyone was dressed up. And yeah. I think it's better to do that, honestly, at the beginning, because by the second or even like, God forbid, the third day, you're like, I don't want to see people anymore. Yeah. Especially in Vegas. <laughs> I know. This is, this is my first time in Vegas. So I'm like, uh, I've been, I have high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are at Caesar, so Caesar's mm -hmm. the place to have those yeah. expectations. <laughs> and uh, the conference was sold out. Yeah, like, I know. Unbelievable. Compared uh, to last year, what it was like fifteen hundred attendees total. Mm -hmm. So they're at three thousand. Oh, oh, yeah, something like that is what I saw in the email. Yeah. So what? Made, what do you think made it jump up double in size this year? Was it Vegas? Yeah. Well, okay. There's so I think there's a people. couple components. I think Vegas is obviously a big draw, but then there's a lot more people getting involved in the space, hearing about it for the first time. I think we also saw there's a ton of so, like vendors here. Yeah. Uh, the like the volume of people that they're bringing has certainly increased. So. For sure. Yeah. The exhibit floor when it opened last night for happy hour was packed. Yeah. Wow. Like, it was. I'm, in terms of, I'm just interest in the industry. Mm -hmm. and, also performance like yeah. yep. when companies are making money they're sending more people to conferences they're sending more people to sort of and continue education learn the things they need to be doing to better run businesses yeah and i think and overall it's great that everyone's getting the other and there's going to be the ad advocacy event tonight yeah sort of uh getting people together put money behind the things we want to do as an industry uh and all, all good things. All opinion. good things. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you want, when you have kind of lackluster attendance, you can feel that it's kind of the, you know, just the energy that an event has. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I agree. Well, as I'm like about to choke <laughs> on my uh, cough drop, um, no, I totally agree. Uh, I think I am like you guys, though, I'm ready to go home almost basically i'm like i just got here <laughs> i know <laughs> just got here but like i'm excited to see you all but i'm also excited like to get back one... into bed and my routine and i know i yeah. flew here i flew here from my sister's engagement party in new york yeah and i'm just like oh my gosh it's been a lot of ping-ponging around the country but i also i feel like talking to the vendors that are just kind of at these one after another to another i mean they must be exhausted Kudos to i know who knows <laughs> seriously our hats go off to you exactly a lot of coffee a lot yeah of coffee. Yep. coffee and Hopefully some uh, liquid IVs and maybe yeah. even real IVs. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the. I was thinking about that. I'm like, that this is an place. option. Yeah. That is an option. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if I called the front desk, would they just? I'm like, oh yeah, we totally have somebody. We'll we'll get that. Like, yeah. Or would they be like, no? We've go. got hangover kits at our booth. Yeah. Oh, you do. I will be stopping by. <laughs> I will be stopping by as well. Do you have anything for a head cold too? That'd be great. We do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's amazy. You're so prepared. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, I know there's quite a few stories to go through and it probably won't meet our full 30 minutes like we normally do. But Jamie, I kind of want to kick off with you starting into the Airbnb bust that was kind of going uh, rampant last week. 
and the week before. Um, yeah, so this some details. this started with a Twitter post, as so many I, mean, I feel like news stories start today. <laughs> Groundbreaking news. Uh, yeah, with we, uh, a few hosts complaining about lack of bookings, um, and it seemed to go viral, uh, both with uh, other hosts that were saying, "Hey, my bookings are down too. Like, is this a common theme?" Uh, and then others sort of picking up that this was sort of the end of the short-term rental business, uh, a collapse of the economy. That's quite that, a proclamation. <laughs> and that uh, we're looking at the uh, end of travel as we know it. Oh, wow. Uh, so Sky is falling. Yeah, yeah. Sky is yeah. falling. Uh, so maybe, and I've got my opinion mm -hmm. on it, but do you have any initial thoughts on yeah. That. Well, I think all of this is incredibly clickbaity. And obviously, that's the whole point. They're trying to drive views. But there's a couple things happening. First, you know, seasonality is a thing. So if you're in uh, you know, a really primary summer vacation market and you're like, my September and October bookings have fallen since July. Yeah, that's that yeah. makes some sense. Um, and we're seeing a lot of new people entering the space as hosts. And they Airbnb has, you know, delivered kind of this package like, hey, if you're kind of the mom and pop operator, sign up with us. This is what you can expect, all of that. And so they, and maybe they did see a lot of really great returns in those the first month or the year. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, things are just kind of, you know, sort of equalizing a little bit and then also having more people come you know adding more supply means there's more supply you might not see those same booking yeah. volumes so yeah. i think there's like a confluence of factors happening yeah and, and i see that looking at the data like overall bookings are up like demand's up 20 percent year over year mm -hmm. like there's no drop in overall bookings mm -hmm. but supplies up 25 percent yeah. year over year so all those bookings are getting spread out over more hosts uh, mm -hmm. occupancy has come down. You think like everyone saying bookings are, let's say hundred, 200 people on Twitter saying their bookings are down. Mm -hmm. Like on average, everyone's bookings are down. Yeah. I'm since listings are up so much. So I don't think it's, I mean, we can say that the, what and people are saying is wrong because mm -hmm. they're experiencing it. Yes, yeah. Bookings are down, but I think in terms of an industry trend, like we're still going in the right direction. Uh, demand booked in October and September relative to last year and years prior was still I'm hitting records. So I think overall the outlook still looks great for the industry. It's, I mean, we're just going to deal with, I mean, what is it? New, a lot of new hosts, new supply people. Yeah sort of learning their market seasonality, things like that. And exactly. Be some growing pain. Yeah. And I think like when you mentioned the article, Tyler, I was like, I feel like I would know about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, we do a pretty, we have a pretty big chunk of our revenue comes from Airbnb. And if they had collapsed in the last five days, I'm like, I feel like, I feel like <laughs> we would have noticed. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't have been here. <laughs> here. Right I was like, yeah, I definitely would be in severe crisis mode. Um, But yeah, and I think it's definitely, there's a lot of buzzy things that have been going around. I saw this business insider kind of post on Instagram saying, you know, you could make almost 200 grand in profit in the year. And this is yeah. how we did it, listing out like the very basic things that you need to do to be a host. And so I think people have just been promised that like this is, you know, the arbitrage is going to it, yeah. be huge. Yeah. And that's just not always the reality. It depends on the market that you're, there's so many different factors. Yeah. Well, and, and also it was like last year you, and you could like put up a tent in your backyard and probably sell it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, like, if I'm seeing now, like people are real, realizing like, oh, like I actually have to do the basics yeah. to make yeah. sure I get bookings. I have to care about my reviews. I've got to maybe invest in some amenities to make sure I'm some getting proper booking. linens. Yeah. Yeah. Book, getting booked first for my competitors. So yeah. And it's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I was going to say the same thing as like the nonstop, like going through TikTok or any like other social medias, you know, I'm going to teach you how to, the, these like Airbnb gurus are just popping out of nowhere. And it's like, okay, a couple of years ago, even pre COVID, I think it was okay. I think we have a lot of them today that are like respectable people in the industry. They really do like diversify their portfolio outside of Airbnb and other things. But now you just have everyone and their grandma jumping onto this trend of like, I'm going to get on TikTok because I know how to shoot a reel or do whatever and, and create this buzz around Airbnb. And uh, it just kind of makes me question like on the education point, like where does, you know, Verma or people from Verma come into play and say, Hey, like we need to really not like stop it, but just educate a little bit better. 
and and kind of shift the focus away from clickbaity articles and yeah titles. i mean if i could have learned how to do this whole job from a tiktok video yeah that would have <laughs> saved me a lot of time <laughs> um you'd be retired i'd be retired yeah <laughs> you know um so i also think that's an important piece though about bringing them into like the the actual yeah. industry and saying, you know, Burma might seem like an unnecessary conference to come to if you're if you have one property, maybe. Yeah. But really showing that there is value in coming to these events because you now like you're not just renting out your home, like it's becoming a real business. And there are, you know, there's a lot you can always learn things to improve your business. Sure. The big even when you've been doing this for 20, 30 years, you can always walk away from these conferences with a little bit of information. So yeah. I think it's a good point about bringing people into the fold and maybe they don't come to the big international conference right away. Maybe they do one of the smaller events first, but just to see that like this is, if this, if you're serious about it, then there's real value in becoming part of this community. 100%. And uh, I was going to say shout out to Robin Cragen. Cause like on, even on like the registration um, things here, I, you know, those, what were the little, little lanyards? Yeah. Uh, not the lanyards, but like the little flags you can put underneath yeah, here. Mm -hmm. There is like, it has like a home, unit count it's like i managed 150 to 200 units they crossed it out saying units and they put homes underneath and i was <laughs> like that's actually like it's like little things like that because yeah. we've just focused on unit or doors or right heads and beds yeah that's where a lot of i don't know a lot of those um places kind of get really misleading it's like yeah all right heads and beds that's all we care about but we're really in like hospitality so yeah that's like my hotel side coming out with like yeah the the hospitality piece well, is missing i actually you know i like admittedly throughout the last six years go through these kind of like this uh roller coaster where like, sometimes i forget what the actual business is yeah. where you if you're like especially if you're just like in the weeds or whatever you're wrapped up in a project and then you ha i sometimes have to remind myself to take a step back and be like okay what is the actual business that we're doing you know like who yeah. are what is the core product and i think that that's actually helpful to come back because then you kind of you can see things from a different perspective but i did see robin's post and i was like i i like that we go by units but i hey. but robin has like homes, homes yeah. like huge, very, homes. huge homes lovely homes so yeah. yes I would not want one of those estates to be called a unit. Seriously. Same. <laughs> Same here. Um, outside of that, we've had some also interesting news pop up. La was it last week? What day is it today? Monday? It's Monday. It is Monday. Yeah. yeah. Friday? Thursday? What day was it? The layoffs. Yeah. Was that Thursday? I think it was Thursday. Yeah. But yeah, la yeah. layoffs at the Yeah. So 3%, 280 people. It's a pretty big number. It's a big number, and but it also isn't that like it isn't super alarming i think you know it's it's obviously not good i feel very bad for anyone that just has you know 280 people it's a lot of people to let go at one time but i think it's important to remember that this is not happening like this isn't just, just a vacasa yeah. issue this isn't just a short-term rental industry issue this is happening across you know multiple industries and i think we're going to continue to see that reduction in workforce um i just saw the projections that um meta was probably going to lay off like 20 percent of its workforce Jeez. and so i think that it's Good for you for calling a meta i would have so I, I almost <laughs> so, said i i want the i almost said facebook but uh, i caught myself not that i owe mark zuckerberg anything <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so i think it's just kind of the i don't think I don't think it's helpful to be alarmist about these yeah. kind of things, but it is, you know, I don't think this is the last time that we'll see that, you know, and yeah. I mean, in comparison, Sonder laid off 25% of its workforce earlier this year. So it's certainly not the first time our industry has had like kind of a big shock like that. Yeah. And, and it's, we're getting to the point in the cycle where and inflation's still really high. The feds trying to slow the economy and inflation report came out last week. That was, terrible they had over eight percent uh cpi growth so they're going to keep it. raising rates the point of them raising rates is to slow the economy and we're more than likely going to see a recession next year we're going to see job losses and a lot of companies especially hospitality related were so dependent on consumer spending mm -hmm. and and if we go into recession and there is a pullback and even if it is a small pullback in travel for companies that are growing really fast, that could just mean a different growth trajectory that tr they're trying to right size to. Yeah. And we see that happening throughout the tech industry. Um, and I'd expect, and we'll probably see it throughout more parts of the economy. 
Mm -hmm. And and that's by design of what the Fed's trying to do because we're sort of in in an overheated economy. Yeah, absolutely. And I also, there's um, an interview with the CEO of Bank of America, and it was kind of a juxtaposition between him and um, I think it might have been um, the CEO of JP Morgan, just kind of they have very different uh, viewpoints on what the like what the next year could be like. Mm-hmm. And his point was like that just that because there is a recession of some kind coming doesn't mean that it's going to be as catastrophic mm-hmm. as, you know, what people I think a lot of people have yeah. PTSD from 2008. Yeah, where it's exactly. Like, oh my gosh. And maybe a great segue. So we launched a new podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hospitality with them with Will uh, called the STR Data Lab. Uh, me and my um, co-host is uh, Brian Kameyer, VP of Marketing. At in our first episode, we actually go through prior recessions and mm-hmm. what the impact was to the hospitality mm-hmm. industry. Uh, and then why we think this one's going to be different than specifically the past. Mm-hmm. It was like we had COVID. We yeah. had the great financial crisis, which was the deepest recession since the Great Depression. We had 9-11. I mean, all these like specifically hurt travel and short-term rentals way more than other aspects of the economy. And this, I do expect to be different and maybe look a lot more like recessions prior to that, like the 91 recession, go back to the 80 recession, which nearly had a blip for revenue uh, for short-term rentals for hotels. Uh, And it maybe means that your near-term memory of what recessions might look like for your business, Mm -hmm. especially in travel, Mm -hmm. are not necessarily what would happen this time. Yeah. Well, I also think that it kind of depends on who some of your core customers are. If you're in a really good drive to market, it may be like that's an easier trip to take than if you were going to fly to, you know, France or Colombia or wherever you're going to go, you know? And so I think that the important thing is to prepare yourself for, you know, kind of a more a scarier scenario but if your business if you have a solid foundation then you can weather some of that uncertainty a little bit more yeah and i was going to say do you think there is going to be a big drop in supply or do will that impact anything at all for for us as well or no i i think i generally supply follows to yeah. uh yeah. if we i even if we go into a mild recession next year i don't expect demand for short-term rentals to actually go down mm. we're in such a like strong growth trajectory uh, that we're just going to see a slowing of demand. So maybe we go from 20% growth this year, like down to like 6% growth next year, which is in a big drop. You're going to see many markets actually go negative. Many types of travel go negative, but overall and still slight growth. Uh, and um, and it's, it's going to hit, as Brandy said, different types of companies, very different. Yeah. I also, there's, um, you know, so many people have been entering the space as host. There's this new type of loan. I forget the name of it. I don't know if you guys, yeah, where it's like, here's just like a house that, you know, based on your projected revenue. Like, I think that uh, seems very bubbly. And I think when, you know, when things get a little bit more difficult, when it'll be the businesses that have like a solid actual business Mm -hmm. that will be able to successfully weather that. And then you might see some of that newer supply, maybe go back into the long term rental market, uh, maybe when people kind of have the reality of yeah. what it takes to actually run this kind of business. And then I'm a broad narrative out there, and I'm sure yet whether I believe in it, is that if we do go into hard times in the economy for people that have second homes, maybe that's the emphasis for them to put it and hire a vacation rental manager and try to make some more money off that home when they're not using it themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're still, and I think since it's put out, there's 5 million second homes out there. Yeah. Only just over a million of them are being used as a short-term rental today. So there's a lot of supply that's out there that could come into the industry. Well, it's great for property managers. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. get ready. <laughs> they're going to need it. Yeah. No, that's really, I I think that it's, there's reason to be optimistic. I would just try to view things in a little bit more optimistic sense. Because, yeah. I don't know, being on the internet these days is very pessimistic. So, we don't want to be part of the sky is falling crew. No, just but I yet. think I think it's kind of like let's just let's prepare and make sure yeah. that we have you know a, a solid foundation, and then um, you know kind of try to anticipate what's coming. But being I think being quick to adapt is one going. It's always the key, and it will only continue to be like you had to adapt with COVID, and yeah. this is coming right after that. You just have to be willing to kind of make some maybe painful but quick decisions. Yeah, and. Also be prepared for 
the repercussions for those, but mm -hmm. that's part of the decision. Well, oh. and I feel like that's, you know, and going back to uh, the Vecasa layoffs, I think that that's part of the thought is like, let's do a big chunk now so that we can restructure, get ourselves yeah. in a good place so that we can continue and that this doesn't become like a spiraling yeah. event, you know? Well, new CEO too. So I think mm -hmm. like, I think coming into an orga organization that big, it's got to be hard to know who's like, obviously there's probably tons of people that have been around forever. Mm -hmm. So like, who's to know who's really been putting in work, not putting in work, vice versa. So maybe just kind of starting off fresh and then kind of gaining momentum with, but you can't, I don't know, just think you know, of like the, the overall operation side, right? Yeah. Well, also like you don't bring in a new sea level person to keep the status quo. Yeah. So I yeah. think that that is probably to be expected. You know? Yeah. And who knows what their next big move is. It's got to be because like with them being public, it's mm -hmm. got to be this. There's got to be a reason behind it. Mm hmm. Don't know exactly what. Maybe it's profitability and figuring out what that looks like for Vicasa. But um, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it'll be interesting. We'll have probably better insight as you know to all these things after the end of this conference. But yeah, yeah so I'd love to keep our ears to the ground for more information. <laughs> What's your guys' prediction? How many news stories do you think we'll see between when this goes live? So anyone who's watching, to then <laughs> uh, uh, the audio side, and then from the end of the conference, how many news stories? Do you well, think we'll I think there's a, going to be a lot. There's definitely probably a lot of like funding news that's yeah. coming out I oh, okay so let's count real news uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i mean i don't know like I, anything exciting like something that we're like damn that's a big move or i don't know like i'm gonna predict like two to three yeah okay that seems like a reasonable amount of it's a safe number it's a safe number <laughs> yeah it's not too great just you're like 10 crazy news great stories news stories you're gonna be mind blown this whole week yeah well i also i mean I think as we're getting towards the end of the year, this is, it's always a weird time of year. It goes by first way too fast. Yeah. And then things, I think people start slowing down a little bit because, you know, the holidays are happening and no yep. one works. Um, <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then, you know, you never know. That's yep. maybe when the craziest thing could happen. Yeah, so. They also have elections coming up in two weeks. Yeah. True. And it's going to be a crazy cycle. Like, yeah. With, uh, so out to the election. Yeah. yeah. Anything not election related is probably going to be very Yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty fair. Yeah. Damn politician. <laughs> but really? can't wait to get through that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Thinking about the holidays again. Exactly. Seriously. Yes. Seriously. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving is a nice bright spot on the horizon. Oh, I can't wait to get stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> so full of food. Um, well, sweet. This has been fun. Yeah. I'm glad that we got to do this in person. I know. Again, with me and Randy, but with you. I now. know. Yeah. I promise we'll get you to the intro. <laughs> I swear. I promise promise um okay well anyone that's attending vrma make sure you come check us out say hi i know brandy and i will be on a panel today yeah. the first day um 4 30 yes 4 30 awesome and then jamie do you have any panels anything you want to plug for air dna what you guys are doing here i don't have any panels uh but and if anyone wants to come by i'll be at booth be hanging out uh tonight tomorrow he has um, hangover cures. Yeah, so that's hangover cures. reason enough. Yeah. Tell them you heard about it on GMH, mm -hmm. and then right. you'll get your yeah. Yeah, happy to talk hangover. about data. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll see you all again next week. Thank you all for tuning in, and have a great rest of your conference season as well.